Hi everyone. So first of all, thank you very much. Uh, I recently hit 600 subscribers on this channel. Uh, I never thought that when I started this that I would get the response that I've gotten to this point. It's great to hear from people that they enjoy the videos, that the videos are, are helping them or providing them with a resource, and that definitely you know, makes this all worthwhile for me. So uh, thank you very much for that, and uh, thank you very much for your continued support and your continued interaction as I continue to make these videos and grow the channel. So recently here at the University of Florida, we acquired two new TEMs, one of which is the subject of this video, and that is an FEI Talos F200i STEM. And what I've done is similarly to what we have for the Tech9 videos, I've created what I've termed a playthrough video, which is me basically demonstrating what I cover in the basic training of this instrument. So basic training on this instrument covers conventional mode operation via high resolution and bright field imaging, as well as collecting selected area diffraction patterns and performing EDS surveys. Again, all in conventional or fixed beam mode. So the basic training doesn't cover things like stem imaging or doing EDS mapping or doing things like performing two beam imaging or weak beam dark field imaging. Those are all separate trainings that are not part of basic training, which I also do. But the point of this video is just to cover the basic training that I provide to all new trainees. Those of you who are familiar with the TechNi platform, which I imagine it is a lot of you, will notice there are a lot of similarities between the microscope control software for the Talos and that of a TechNi. In many respects, they are carbon copies of one another, although there are some additional pieces of software on the Talos platform that you will not find on the TechNi platform because the Talos is more modern than the TechNi is. Now I do cover things like loading holders and inserting retracting holders into the microscope as part of the basic training, but I have not included those in this video. And the reason for that is the holders that are used on the Talos are identical to the ones used on the Techni, and I've already covered those in other videos, so I'm not gonna cover them here. And the holder insertion extraction procedure on the Talos is also identical to what is done on a Techni. So again, for purposes of clarity, I'm also not including that in this video as well because I've covered that elsewhere. I do eventually plan on recording additional videos to cover other operational aspects of this instrument, including things like the stem and the weak beam dark field. Um, it's just hard to do that right now because I'm limited in my access to the tool because as many of you are probably experiencing right now, we have restrictions due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Lastly, I just want to mention that this video was one continuous shot that I did in one take. And it was very difficult for me to maintain proper contrast and brightness on my camera, AKA my iPhone, while I was doing this, um, because there really was a very large dynamic range that I needed to capture all the nuances of what was being shown on the two monitors. So I tried very hard to make adjustments to that in Windows Movie Maker to make that easier to see, but I apologize if in some instances it's a little harder to see than in others. I did do the best that I could, but obviously as this was one continuous shot, I didn't have the ability to go and periodically adjust the settings on my camera. So with that, I hope you're all staying safe and healthy and hopefully we all get to return to some sort of normal existence very soon. And with that, let's take a look at this Talos and what we cover in the basic training. In microscope control, select the startup tab, then navigate to the high tension control panel. 
The microscope is configured for operation at either 200 or 80 kV, with 200 kV being the default. Navigate to the Alignments tab, then to the Alignments control panel, and expand the flap out arrow in the upper right hand corner. Select the appropriate alignment file for operation at either 200 or 80 kV and select Apply. Select the Beam tab and then navigate to the FEG Registers control panel and select the appropriate FEG register for conventional mode operation at either 80 or 200 kV and then select Set. In the Beam Settings control panel, adjust the slider to set the spot size to a numerical value of 1. Select the Startup tab and then navigate to the Vacuum control panel. Verify that all the vacuum levels are acceptable and select column valves closed to open the column isolation valves. Intensity should be immediately evident on the flu cam, provided nothing is blocking the beam path. On the right hand control panel, use the magnification knob to reduce the indicated magnification to switch from SA into LM mode, which will be used to navigate around to find an area of interest. Use the intensity knob on the left hand control panel to adjust the size of the beam as needed. Use the beam shift trackball also on the left hand control panel to shift the beam as needed. Note that above the beam shift trackball and intensity knob are controls that may be used to adjust the sensitivity of each control. Use the joystick on the right hand control panel to move the stage as needed to locate an area of interest and center it in the flue cam. After finding and centering an area of interest, use the magnification knob to adjust the indicated magnification so the microscope switches back into SA mode. With the microscope now in SA mode, the specimen should be brought to you centric height. Set the indicated mag in SA mode to an indicated magnification of approximately 11,000. Then select the eucentric focus button on the right hand control panel. And then use the Z axis buttons also on the right hand control panel to adjust the specimen height until the image is out of contrast or the contrast is minimized. The next step in the alignment procedure is to align the C2 aperture. Set the indicated magnification to 74,000x. Then use the intensity knob to bring the beam to crossover on the flue cam. Use the beam shift trackball to center the beam on the flue cam. From here, the intensity knob may be turned either clockwise or counterclockwise to expand the beam. Be sure to always expand the beam by turning the intensity knob clockwise. Note the position of the beam when it is expanded from crossover. If the beam is not centered, then the C2 aperture needs to be aligned. In microscope control, select the tune tab and then navigate to the aperture's control panel. In the pull down list next to condenser, you have four options for the condenser aperture. When operating at 200 kilovolts and needing fields of view less than approximately one micron, the 50 micron condenser aperture will be sufficient. Select the adjust button next to the pull down list. Then from crossover, making sure the beam is initially centered on the flue cam, turn the intensity knob clockwise to expand the beam. If the beam is not centered on the flue cam, use the multifunction knobs on the left and right hand control panels to center the beam. Once the beam has been centered with the multifunction knobs, return the beam to crossover using the intensity knob, recenter with the trackball and then re-expand the beam from crossover, again turning the intensity knob clockwise. Again, use the multifunction knobs to recenter the beam on the flue cam if necessary. Typically, only two iterations will be necessary in order to properly center the C2 aperture. 
When finished, select the Tune tab in Microscope Control, then navigate to the Apertures Control Panel and select Adjust next to Condenser to deactivate the multifunction knobs for adjusting the condenser aperture position. Span the beam slightly larger than crossover. While remaining in the Tune tab, navigate to the Stigmator Control Panel and select Condenser. If the beam does not appear circular, the condenser astigmatism needs to be corrected. Use the multifunction knobs to make the beam circular. When finished, return to the Tune tab, navigate to the Stigmator Control Panel, and select None. Then expand the beam so it is bigger than the flu cam, and then use the Stage Control to navigate back to your area of interest. the magnification control on the right hand control panel to set the indicated magnification to a range appropriate for the type of imaging you plan on doing. For high resolution imaging, generally this should start at around 245,000x. Expand the beam from crossover again, turning the intensity knob clockwise, making sure that the entire beam is visible, but that you can still see an image of the specimen on the flu cam. Use the focus knob on the right hand control panel to focus the image by looking for the condition of minimum contrast. Note that the focusing knob actually consists of two separate knobs, an outer knob which is used to control the strength of the focus and an inner knob which is used to control the actual focusing. When finished focusing, recenter the beam on the flu cam using the beam shift trackball. Do not adjust the size of the beam as the whole beam needs to be visible for this next alignment step. In microscope control, Select the Tune tab, navigate to the Direct Alignments Control Panel, and select Beam Tilt PPX. Use the multifunction knobs to minimize the separation of the beam. When finished, select Done from the Direct Alignments Control Panel and then use the beam shift trackball to recenter the beam on the flu cam. Return to the direct alignments control panel and select beam tilt PPY. Again, use the multifunction knobs to minimize separation of the beam and when finished, select done in the direct alignments control panel. Recenter the beam on the flu cam using the beam shift trackball. Then turning the intensity knob clockwise, expand the beam so the edges of the beam are just outside the viewable area of the flu cam. Use the joystick to center a recognizable feature on the flu cam. Return to microscope control, select the Tune tab, navigate to the direct alignments control panel, and select rotation centering. The image should now appear to go in and out of focus. If the flu cam image is too difficult to see, you may select one of the options underneath the flu cam image to make the image more visible. Use the multifunction knobs to minimize shifting of the image as the image goes in and out of focus. When the rotation center is correctly set, the image should not shift when it goes in and out of focus. Select Done in the Direct Alignments control panel when finished. When working with a single crystal specimen or a coarsely grained specimen and you are intending on performing high resolution imaging, you will always obtain the best images when the specimen is tilted to a major crystallographic zone axis.
To do this, we must use diffraction mode. To enter diffraction mode, select diffraction on the right-hand control panel. Note that the magnification knob on the right-hand control panel is now used to change the indicated magnification in microscope control. A shorter camera length will provide a wider angular view and a smaller magnification of the pattern, while a larger camera length will provide a smaller angular view and a higher magnification of the pattern. Once an indicated camera length has been selected, use the multifunction knobs to center the direct beam on the flu cam. The stage may now be tilted to align the specimen to a major crystallographic zone axis. This is done using the alpha and beta tilt controls on the left-hand control panel. It is usually best to adjust the alpha tilt control first as this is the axis along which the specimen should maintain eucentric position. That being said, it is fairly common, particularly when working at high indicated magnifications, that when the stage is tilted, the area of interest will move out from under the beam. Thus, it will be necessary to select diffraction on the right-hand control panel to return to SA mode, then use the stage to recenter the area of interest under the beam, and then select diffraction again on the right-hand control panel to re-enter diffraction mode. To achieve perfect zone axis alignment, it is quite common to have to repeat this process iteratively of tilting while observing the specimen in diffraction mode, then switching back into imaging mode, repositioning the area of interest under the beam, and then switching back into diffraction mode several times. When zone axis alignment has been obtained, select the diffraction button to return back into SA mode. If a substantial amount of tilting has been performed, it may be necessary to re-establish the specimen at eucentric height. To do this, simply use the Z-axis controls on the right-hand control panel to adjust the specimen height until minimum contrast is obtained. Please also note that if the z-axis position of the stage is adjusted, that the zone axis alignment of the specimen may also be slightly off from where it was initially. Thus, it is best to return to diffraction mode and verify that zone axis alignment of the specimen has been maintained. If not, further adjustment to the alpha and beta tilts may be necessary.
Once zone axis alignment is complete, use the multifunction knobs to recenter the direct beam on the flue cam. In microscope control, select the tune tab and then navigate to the aperture's control panel. In the pull down list next to objective, select 70 microns for high resolution imaging at 200 kilovolts. The objective aperture will automatically insert and should be evident in the diffraction pattern. Note the appearance of the objective aperture edge. If it does not appear sharp and in focus, use the focus knob on the right hand control panel to adjust until the aperture edge is sharp and focused. Do not worry about the appearance of the spots in the diffraction pattern while doing this. Your only concern at this point is the objective aperture edge. Then use the multifunction knobs to center the objective aperture around the direct beam. Since the direct beam was already centered with respect to the flue cam, this will also be the equivalent of centering the objective aperture with respect to the flue cam. Select diffraction on the right hand control panel to switch from diffraction back into SA mode. Use the beam shift trackball to recenter the beam on the flue cam and then adjust the intensity knob on the left hand panel to adjust the beam so the edges are slightly larger than the viewable area of the flue cam. We are now ready to start acquiring images. Maximize the acquisition portion of Velox. Before acquiring any images with Velox, it is recommended that the software be configured to automatically save and name your data. Select the edit pull down menu in Velox and then preferences. In the dialog box that pops up, you can configure where the data will be saved to and how the files will be named. Note that for this function to work correctly, it must be done before any images are acquired. When finished, select OK in the Preferences dialog box. Select Camera View from the toolbar to insert the SATA camera and start acquiring a live image. Navigate to the Detector Layout panel and select Main Screen to retract the viewing screen and place the live image on the SATA camera. Then navigate to the Display Settings panel and select the FFT tab to see an FFT of the live image. This will be used to later aid in focusing and correction of objective astigmatism. The exposure time for the live image is indicated on the main toolbar. Use the plus or minus buttons next to the exposure time to increase or decrease the exposure time by a factor of two, respectively. An exposure time of 200 to 1000 milliseconds is typically sufficient for most live imaging situations, keeping in mind that a longer exposure time will result in higher signal to noise ratio. Return to the Display Settings panel and select the FFT tab. If part of the area of the image is amorphous, diffused rings should be evident in the FFT. If the rings appear asymmetric or elliptical, then objective astigmatism is present. Return to Microscope Control, select the Tune tab, navigate to the Stigmator Control panel and select Objective. Then use the multifunction knobs on the control panels to make the rings in the FFT circular. To assist with this, return to the FFT of the live image in Velox and check the box next to Show Spatial Frequency underneath the FFT. This will superimpose a circle in the FFT. Use the plus or minus buttons next to Show Spatial Frequency to adjust the radius of this circle as needed. Use the focus knob on the right hand control panel to obtain a condition of slight underfocus. This can be done using the aid of the FFT, which will be addressed shortly. Select camera from the main toolbar and then the camera acquire icon. Here the settings for acquiring the final image can be adjusted as needed. For most high resolution and bright field imaging applications, pixel dimensions of 2048 by 2048 with an exposure time of one to two seconds will be sufficient. To acquire the final image, select the camera acquire icon from the main toolbar. The acquired image will be sent to the processing portion of Velox.
If image acquisition at a different indicated magnification is needed, the incident illumination will need to be adjusted. It is best to do this using the live image on the flu cam rather than the SATA cam. In Velox, return to the detector layout panel and select main screen to reinsert the viewing screen. This will put the live image back on the flu cam. Set the indicated magnification as needed using the magnification knob on the right hand control panel. Then use the intensity knob on the left hand control panel to bring the beam to crossover. Use the beam shift trackball to recenter the beam and then turn the intensity knob clockwise to expand the beam so the edges are just beyond the viewable area of the flu cam. Then return to Velox, navigate to the detector layout panel and select main screen to retract the viewing screen and put the live image back onto the SATA camera. Keep in mind that if the indicated magnification is adjusted, it will usually be necessary to adjust both the objective stigmators and the focus. Once again, when you are ready to record your final image, select Camera Acquire from the main toolbar. Once again, if imaging at a different indicated magnification is needed, return to the detector layout panel and select Main Screen to insert the viewing screen. Set the new indicated magnification and adjust the illumination accordingly. Bear in mind that the highest indicated magnification in SA mode is 630KX. Then return to Velox, navigate to the detector layout panel, and select main screen to put the live image back on the SATA camera. In addition to correction of objective astigmatism, the FFT can also be used to obtain the proper focal condition. First, the focal condition should be verified to be in a condition of under focus. To determine this using the FFT, note how the rings in the FFT expand based on how the focus knob on the right hand control panel is turned. If the rings in the FFT expand when the focus knob is turned clockwise, then the focal condition is that of under focus. However, if the rings in the FFT expand when the focus knob is turned counterclockwise, then the focal condition is that of over focus. To obtain the optimal focal condition, start from a condition of clear under focus, then turn the focus knob clockwise to expand the first dark ring in the FFT as wide as possible. Keep in mind that this will be easier to do the higher the indicated magnification as this results in a larger angular field of view in the FFT. If the indicated magnification needs to be set higher than 630KX, the microscope will need to be switched from SA into MH mode. To do this, place the live image back on the flu cam as described previously, then use the magnification knob on the right hand control panel to switch from SA into MH mode, which has three indicated magnifications, 650KX being the smallest. When switching to MH mode, it is best to re-perform some alignments. Adjust the intensity knob on the left hand control panel so the entire beam is visible on the flu cam. Then select the tune tab in microscope control, navigate to the direct alignments control panel, and select beam tilt PPX. Use the multifunction knobs to minimize separation of the beam. Then repeat this process by selecting beam tilt PPY. Keep in mind that when you adjust the Y pivot point, it may be necessary to shift the beam back onto the flu cam using the beam shift trackball. When finished adjusting the pivot points, recenter the beam on the flu cam using the beam shift trackball and then expand the beam by turning the intensity knob clockwise so the beam edges are just beyond the viewable area of the flu cam. Then use the joystick on the right hand control panel to center a recognizable feature on the flu cam. Select the tune tab in microscope control, navigate to the direct alignments control panel and select rotation centering. Use the multifunction knobs to minimize any shifting of the image. When finished, select Done in the Direct Alignments control panel.
Lastly, centering of the objective aperture should be rechecked. Select the diffraction button on the right hand control panel to enter diffraction mode. Use the multifunction knobs on the left and right hand control panels to recenter the direct beam on the flue cam. Note the position of the objective aperture rim relative to the direct beam. If it is not centered, select the tune tab and microscope control, navigate to the apertures control panel, and select adjust next to objective. Then use the multifunction knobs to recenter the objective aperture around the direct beam. Typically, this only requires a minor adjustment, if any adjustment at all. Select the diffraction button on the right hand control panel to switch back into imaging mode. Then use the intensity knob on the left hand control panel so the entire beam is visible on the flue cam. Then recenter the beam using the beam shift trackball and then expand the beam turning the intensity knob clockwise so the edges are just beyond the viewable area of the flue cam. Then return to Velox, navigate to the detector layout panel and select main screen to retract the viewing screen and put the live image back on the SATA camera. It will be necessary to adjust the focus and objective stigmators when switching into MH mode. In Velox, navigate to Display Settings and select the FFT tab. Use the Focus knob to obtain a condition of slight underfocus. Then return to Microscope Control, select the Tune tab, navigate to the Stigmator control panel, and select Objective. Again, use the multifunction knobs to adjust the rings in the FFT so they are circular. Note that it is always best to adjust the objective stigmators with the focal condition set as close to optimal as possible. Again, this corresponds to the condition where the first dark ring in the FFT is expanded to the point where it is barely detectable. Again, keeping in mind that this condition should be obtained starting from a condition of clear underfocus and then turning the focus knob on the right hand control panel clockwise to expand the rings in the FFT. I apologize in advance that I was not able to perform this perfectly while filming but it was a little tricky to perform this because I was looking at the screen at an angle so my head did not get in the shot. Please keep in mind that if the focal condition is set for a particular location on the specimen and the stage is moved to a new location, it will likely be necessary to readjust the focus. This will typically be necessary even if the stage is only moved a few tens of nanometers. The procedure for adjusting the indicated magnification while operating in MH mode is essentially identical to that for operating in SH mode. Simply insert the viewing screen in Velox to return the live image back to the flue cam. Then readjust the area of illumination using the intensity knob and beam shift trackball and then retract the viewing screen to place the live image back onto the SATA camera. Again, keeping in mind that adjustments to the focus and or objective stigmators may now be necessary.
As stated previously, there are three indicated magnifications in MH mode, with the lowest being 650KX, the intermediate value being 820KX, and the highest value being 1.05 million X. Here we just acquired an image at 820KX indicated magnification and will now switch to the highest indicated magnification. Once again, reinsert the viewing screen to place the live image back onto the flu cam, then adjust the illumination using the intensity knob and beam shift trackball, and then retract the viewing screen to place the live image back onto the SATA camera. Once again, an indicated magnification of 1.0 million X is the highest possible indicated magnification on this microscope when operating in conventional mode. If the SATA camera is not actively going to be in use for an extended period of time, it is best to retract it from the column. In Velox, select Detector Layout and then Main Screen to reinsert the viewing screen. Then select SATA to stop the live view and retract the SATA camera from the column. Having demonstrated use of this system for high resolution imaging, we will now transition to discussing using the instrument for bright field imaging. In principle, the only fundamental difference between bright field and high resolution imaging is that in the former, a small enough objective aperture is selected such that only the direct beam in the diffraction pattern may contribute to the image. Additionally, bright field imaging is also typically performed with indicated magnifications not seeding a few 10,000 X. Bring the beam to crossover and then center on the flu cam. Then expand the beam so the edges are just beyond the viewable area of the flu cam by turning the intensity knob clockwise. Subsequently, select a diffraction button on the right-hand control panel to enter diffraction mode. As you can see here, the objective aperture is too large to select only the direct beam. Additionally, you may find it necessary or beneficial to adjust the display settings on the flu cam to make it easier to differentiate the beams. Select the Tune tab in Microscope Control, navigate to the Apertures control panel, and select an aperture from the pull-down menu next to Objective. Select Adjust, and then use the multifunction knobs to center the objective aperture around the direct beam. In this case, while the objective aperture selected is smaller than the one previously used for high-resolution imaging, it is still too large to effectively isolate the direct beam, and thus a smaller objective aperture is necessary. Select a smaller objective aperture from the list of options, then select Adjust, and then use the multifunction knobs to center the objective aperture around the direct beam. In this case, a small enough objective aperture has been selected such that the direct beam can be isolated. When finished centering the objective aperture, select Adjust in the Aperture's control panel, and then select the diffraction button on the right-hand control panel to re-enter SA mode. When switching from diffraction back into imaging mode, it is usually a good idea to recheck your illumination. In this case, simply converge the beam down until the edges are visible on the flu cam, then recenter with the beam shift trackball, and then expand the beam so the edges are just beyond the viewable area of the flu cam. Collecting bright field images with the SATA camera is essentially identical to the procedure used to collect high resolution images. In the acquisition portion of Velox, Select Camera View to insert the SATA camera. Navigate to the Detector Layout panel and then select Main Screen to retract the viewing screen and place the image on the SATA camera. To properly focus a bright field image, it is best to use Fresnel fringes, which occur at the interface between two different materials, or in this case, the vacuum specimen interface at the specimen edge. The optimal focal condition is again one 
a very slight underfocus, which in this case corresponds to the presence of a very slight light Fresnel fringe at the vacuum specimen interface. Select Camera Acquire from the main toolbar to acquire your final image. If image collection at a different indicated magnification is needed, navigate to the detector layout panel in Bellox and select Main Screen to reinsert the viewing screen. Use the magnification knob on the right hand control panel to set the new indicated magnification and then use the intensity knob and beam shift trackball on the left hand control panel to readjust the illumination accordingly. Then simply return to the detector layout panel in Bellox and select main screen to retract the viewing screen and place the live image on the SATA camera. Also note that when performing bright field imaging, that correction of objective astigmatism using the FFT is generally not recommended as the indicated magnification is generally not high enough to do this effectively. When finished collecting images, return to the detector layout panel and select main screen to reinsert the viewing screen. Then select camera acquire to collect one final image, which in this case will be of nothing. Then return to the detector layout panel and select SATA to stop the live image and retract the SATA camera. Maximize the processing portion of Velox. All images collected during your session will be present on the left side of the window. If you wish to discard any images collected during your session, simply select an image and then right click on it and then select the option to delete. However, do not delete the image of nothing that was collected just prior to finishing imaging. The remaining images may now be exported into a standard image format. Before doing this, verify that the image of nothing is selected by double left clicking on it. Select the file pull down menu and then batch export. In the dialog box that pops up, first navigate and identify the directory where the raw images have been saved. Then specify the directory where the exported images will be sent to. Lastly, you may specify the format for the exported images. Typically, 8-bit TIFF is sufficient for most applications. Then select Export to export the images to the specified directory. You will notice here that there are only eight exported images, whereas there are nine inside of Velox. This is because the last image that is selected, which in this case was the image of nothing, is not exported during this process. Thus, by having the image of nothing, all meaningful images will end up exported, whereas without the image of nothing, one would end up being left out. We will now transition to the discussion of collecting selected area diffraction patterns. The most important thing to keep in mind regarding collection of selected area diffraction patterns is that it should only ever be done using the flu cam and not the SATA camera. The first step in performing selected area diffraction is to obtain a parallel incident beam. To do this, select diffraction on the right hand control panel. Then select the tune tab and microscope control, navigate to the apertures control panel, and select and insert the largest objective aperture. The position of the objective aperture is not important at this point, so long as the edges of it are clearly visible in the diffraction pattern. Use the focus knob on the right hand control panel to focus the edge of the objective aperture so the edges are sharp. Then use the intensity knob on the left hand control panel to focus the spots in the diffraction pattern until they are as small as possible. This ensures that the incident illumination is now parallel. With the incident beam now parallel, any astigmatism in the diffraction pattern may now be corrected. Use the focus knob on the right hand control panel to expand the direct spot. If the expanded direct spot does not appear circular, then astigmatism is present in the pattern. To correct this, select the Tune tab in Microscope Control, navigate to the Stigmator Control Panel, and select Diffraction. Then use the Multifunction knobs to make the expanded direct spot circular. When finished, select None in the Stigmator Control Panel, and then use the Focus knob on the right-hand control panel to refocus the spots so they are as small as possible.
the objective aperture should now be retracted. Navigate to the aperture's control panel and select objective to retract the objective aperture. Then select diffraction to return to SA mode. When returning to SA mode, do not perform any adjustments to the illumination using the intensity knob on the left hand panel as this will result in the beam no longer being parallel. Use the magnification knob on the right hand panel to adjust the indicated magnification as needed and then you may use the beam shift trackball on the left hand control panel to recenter the beam. Again, do not adjust the intensity knob on the left hand panel, even if the entire beam is visible on the flue cam. Select the tune tab and microscope control, navigate to the apertures control panel and select an aperture from the pull down list next to selected area. Be sure to select one of the smallest two selected area apertures as the two larger apertures are actually larger than the area illuminated by the parallel beam and thus provide no selected area benefit. In the apertures control panel, select adjust next to selected area and then use the multifunction knobs to move the selected area and position it around the area of interest. Select adjust when finished and then diffraction on the right hand control panel to enter diffraction mode. Set the display mode for the flue cam to natural, then insert the beam stop using the shortcut from the flue cam toolbar. The direct beam should then be blocked by the beam stop. Then switch the flue cam view mode from natural into manual. In the camera menu to the right of the flue cam image, select the settings tab. Verify that the auto and dual boxes are both unchecked. Then select a preset value from the pull down menu next to exposure time. The exposure time may be set up to the point at which intensity saturation in the pattern becomes evident. When ready to acquire the diffraction pattern, select the snapshot shortcut from the flue cam toolbar. This will send the diffraction pattern to TIA. Once in TIA, select the file pull down menu and then save the diffraction pattern as an EMI file, which is the raw data type used in TIA. Once the pattern has been saved in EMI format, you may then right click on the pattern and then select export data. You can then use the options below to export the pattern in a standard image format. To collect the diffraction pattern at a different indicated camera length, return to the flue cam image, then retract the beam stop using the shortcut from the flue cam toolbar. Then use the magnification knob on the right hand control panel to set the indicated camera length as desired. Use the multifunction knobs on the left and right hand control panel to center the direct beam on the flue cam. The position of the direct beam will change slightly as the indicated camera length is changed. Then insert the beam stop using the shortcut from the flue cam toolbar. Once again, this should result in the direct beam being covered. Return to the camera menu to the right of the flue cam image, select the settings tab, and once again adjust the exposure time as necessary until sufficient signal is generated in the pattern. Finally, select the snapshot shortcut from the flue cam toolbar to record the diffraction pattern and send it to TIA. The process of recording a diffraction pattern is repeated again. The only difference being in this case, the indicated camera length is decreased from the initial value, whereas previously we showed the example of increasing the indicated camera length from the initial value. However, the procedure used to do this is exactly the same. When finished recording diffraction patterns, return to the flue cam image and retract the beam stop using the shortcut from the flue cam toolbar. Then select the diffraction button on the right hand control panel 
to switch from diffraction back into SA mode. Select the Tune tab in Microscope Control, navigate to the Aperture Control Panel, and select Selected Area to retract the Selected Area Aperture. We will now move on to the last part of the demonstration, which is performing EDS surveys while operating in conventional mode. Prior to performing any EDS analyses, select the Tune tab in Microscope Control, navigate to the Aperture's Control Panel, and verify that the objective and selected area apertures are both retracted. You may adjust the illumination as you see fit for performing your survey. However, verify that you are not illuminating any part of the specimen and or grid that is effectively opaque to the electron beam, as this will result in an EDS detector overload. If using the single tilt holder, select the Stage tab in Microscope Control, navigate to the Stage Control Panel, and select the flap out arrow in the upper right hand corner. Select the Control tab in the expanded window. Under Alpha Toggle, input a value of 15 degrees and then select Set Alpha. Again, this is only necessary if using the single tilt holder. Maximize the Esprit 2 software for the EDS system on the right hand panel. Verify that Spectra is selected from the list of options on the left hand side of the window. In the Project Configurator on the right side of the window, select the Input Output button and then select New to open up a new project file. Then navigate to the Spectrometer Configurator and select the Spectrometer Position icon. In the Detector Position dialog box, select OK to insert the EDS detector. Return to the Spectrometer Configurator and select the Downward Pointing Arrow. Then under EDS Detector Configuration for Maximum Energy, select either 20 or 40 keV for the largest possible X-ray energy that can be detected. Navigate to the Sample Configurator and select the Downward Facing Arrow. In the Sample Properties dialog box, under Name, input the name of the specimen and then select OK. Select the Downward Pointing Arrow next to Preview to set the integration time used to collect a preview of the EDS spectrum. Typically, this value should be set to a few seconds. Select Preview to view a preview of the EDS spectrum. If the peaks in the spectrum are too difficult to see, right-click on the spectrum and select Automatic Scale. To assign labels to the peaks, select the Periodic Table icon to the upper right of the spectrum. In the pop-up window, select the Table of Elements tab. You may then select Automatic ID to auto-ID the peaks or you may click individual elements to add the peaks for those elements accordingly. You may left click and drag on the energy axis of the spectrum to center a new value in the window. Additionally, you may expand or contract the energy axis by left-clicking on the energy axis and then using the scroll wheel of the mouse. When ready to acquire your final spectrum, select the downward pointing arrow next to Acquire. Under Acquisition Parameters, verify that the radio button next to Manual is selected. Then select Acquire to start acquiring the spectrum. As manual mode was previously selected, acquisition will continue until acquire is selected again. Again, you may right click on the spectrum and select auto scale as needed. Manual adjustment to the counts axis of the spectrum can be performed similarly to what was shown for the energy axis. Simply left click and drag on the counts axis to expand or contract it accordingly. To manually ID a peak in the spectrum, simply double left click on it. In the dialog box that pops up, select the Finder tab. A list of prospective element peaks will be shown. With this window still open, you may double click on any other peaks to see prospective elements. Left clicking on the peak from the list will add it to the spectrum. Additionally, you may double left click on the element from the list to pull up additional options for peak labeling. 
These include being able to label the peak by shell and or transition. Additionally, the ability to apply this same labeling scheme to all other peaks in the spectrum is provided. When ready to stop spectrum acquisition, simply select Acquire and acquisition will stop. Select the Input Output icon near the upper right corner of the spectrum window and then Add to Project. The added spectrum will now be shown in the Project Configurator. Double left click on the spectrum in the Project Configurator to pull up the Edit Spectrum window. Changes to the energy and or count axes of the spectrum may be adjusted accordingly as was shown previously. Additionally, modifying the labeling of peaks in the spectrum may also be performed accordingly as was shown previously while the spectrum was being acquired. With the edit spectrum window still open, select the input output icon near the upper right corner of the spectrum. Under spectra, select save to save the spectrum in a raw data format for replotting using a graphical analysis software. Additionally, under Graphic, select Save to save an image of the spectrum as presented in the Edit Spectrum window. In the Project Configurator, select the Input Output icon. Under Project, select Save As to save the project so it may be later reopened in Esprit 2. When finished performing EDS, or if EDS will not actively be performed again until later in the session, it is best to retract the EDS detector. Navigate to the Spectrometer Configurator and then select the Detector Position icon. In the Detector Position dialog box, select OK to retract the detector. We will now discuss finishing the session. If any images were recorded in Bellox and are still open in the processing side of the software, it is best to close these so that a subsequent user cannot accidentally delete them. Select Select All above the panel showing all of the collected images, then right-click and select Close Selected. Then navigate to the acquisition portion of Bellox. In the Detector Layout panel, verify that SATA is not selected, as this will mean the camera is not inserted. In Microscope Control, select the Tune tab and then navigate to the Apertures Control panel and verify the objective and SA apertures are both retracted. Then select the Startup tab, navigate to the Vacuum Control panel, and select Column Valves Closed. When homing is complete, the X, Y, Z, Alpha, and Beta coordinates of the stage will all be approximately zero. Once homing of the stage is complete, the holder may be retracted from the column.